Hey everybody, do you have two identical X-Touch controllers and one of them doesn't ever show up in Pro Tools on Mac and you're wondering how to fix that? Well, I'm gonna show you right now. Let's go. Okay, so why does this happen? Why when you have either, you know, maybe two X-Touch Universals or two X-Touch Extenders, why does only one of them show up in Pro Tools? Well, that's because Pro Tools sees them as the same device. So it can't differentiate between them and say, well, this one's supposed to be for channels one to eight, this one for nine to 16, and so on. If you have three of the same one, it would be exactly the same situation. Pro Tools doesn't know how to separate those devices. So there's a really easy way to fix this. You're gonna use Network MIDI. Now, I already did a video on this for PC, and we used a program called RTP MIDI. Well, that program is already built in to Mac. It's not called RTP MIDI, it's just part of the MIDI studio, and RTP MIDI is actually a clone of what's already in your Mac software. So to make this work, what we have to do is create two instances of network devices. We're gonna create one instance for our first X-Touch, a second instance for our second X-Touch, and it's gonna be based on the IP address of both and a port number for both. So the first thing we need to do is get our X-Touch controllers into the right mode. So let's look at our first one here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the select button while you power on the device. So turn it off, hold the button, and then turn it on while you're holding it. This brings you into your setup mode. Now under mode, we want this to be HUI, human user interface, interfaces network, network mode is slave, and I'm giving it a port of 5004. Over here, let's switch this to HUI, and this one is port 5006. So they have to have separate ports and they have to have separate IP addresses. The next thing we do is we are going to go to network mode and turn it to the right, and this is where we're gonna see DHCP and it's set to on. DHCP will pull an address from your network automatically. So if you don't know how your network functions, leave it to DHCP on. That way you don't have to worry about trying to set an address yourself. Now, of course, if you know how your network works and you wanna set a static IP, you can cycle this to off, then turn this one more to the right, and now you can set a static IP. But if that makes no sense to you, if you don't know what I am talking about, leave your DHCP set to on. So once you've made those choices, you're going to hit select, and this will bring our device into an active mode where it's waiting for an IP address, and it has received one from my network. This one is 192.168.0.20. So let's go over here. We've got the same thing set up. I'm gonna hit select and wait for it to pull an address. 192.168.0.21. That's great. So these are both now ready for us to activate on our system. What we have to do next is create instances of these devices in our MIDI network. So let's do that right now. Okay, so first we need to open up Audio MIDI Setup. Once you've got this open, you're gonna come up to Window and you're going to choose Show MIDI Studio. And then under MIDI Studio, you'll see this little globe symbol. Click on that, and this opens up our MIDI network setup. So what we need to do is create two sessions, and inside each one of those sessions, we are going to have an instance of a controller. So the first thing I need to do here is I'm gonna click on the plus, and session one, I'm gonna name it X-Touch left. Then I'm gonna create another one and I'm gonna call it X-Touch Right. And now I'm going to create two device instances down here under Sessions and Directories. So click on the plus. The first one is gonna be X-Touch Left. And then we know that the address of our first device is 192.168.0.20, port 5004. So we've added that. Now let's add another one, call this X touch right. You can name these anything you want, both the sessions and the devices. I'm just keeping it simple here for myself. 
The address for this one is 192.168.0.21 with a port of 5006. So we've created our two sessions and we've created our two device instances. So I want to activate both of these sessions. And under XTouch left, I want to activate the XTouch left. So I'm gonna click connect. And under XTouch right, I want to activate the XTouch right instance. So I'm gonna click connect. And now, if we've done this correctly, the IP address that was showing on both of our devices should have disappeared. And that means that our devices are waiting for more information. So you can see on this first one, my address has disappeared. And over here, my address has disappeared. With both of our controllers in the right setup state, and now that we've added two sessions with two instances of our controllers, we can go into Pro Tools. So let's do that. I've already got a session open. You just need to create one. Then you're going to go to Setup, Peripherals, MIDI Controllers tab. And in the first one, you are going to select HUI and you are going to choose your predefined network X touch left or whatever you named your first one. And that needs to be the same in both the receive from and the send to. In the second controller, choose HUI again. Now you're going to choose your second controller. For me, it's X touch right. Again, both in the receive from and the send to. Click OK. And both of our controllers are ready for action. So real quick, let's add some channels here. We've got two controllers, so I'm gonna add 16 channels. And you should have heard my faders come to life. I'm gonna pick up my other camera here, and you can see I've got channels one through eight here, and I've got channel nine through 16 over here. And so let's just move channel one, two, three, let's move these first faders. You can see that's my first eight. And let's move these ones. You can see that this is now my second eight channels, nine to 16. So we know it worked. Unfortunately, the thing that doesn't work is the master fader. This is just by virtue of the way Pro Tools communicates with this particular controller. Now, what happens is if you add a master channel, so let's do that. Let's go master fader, puts it at the end, and you will see that I'm, and you will see that I'm moving my master channel here and nothing's happening in the software. Same thing over here, nothing's happening in the software. Now, what does happen is if I use my channel bank over, oops, not channel bank, sorry, fader bank over, you can see we do get a master fader that jumps up here. So really what happens is that your master fader, it's not assigned as a true master in the system, so it just shows up as another fader. So really what you could do is, let's modify this slightly. Let's get rid of this channel 16. And so now I've got one to eight over here and I have nine to 15 on my second controller, but on that last channel is now my master. So if you're willing to lose a channel, you can do it that way. Um, otherwise you just know you need to bank over and then you'll actually have your master fader available. So there you go. When Pro Tools won't let you add to the exact same controller via USB, you can now do it through Network MIDI. I hope this was interesting, entertaining, educational. If it was any of those three things, you know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. You can actually check us out on Patreon, or you can even join the channel down below. Just throw a few dollars at us for coffee or whatever, and that supports the channel in a huge way. Anyway, regardless of that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time here on Quickies. Bye, everybody.